Pete Fairbanks is the closer, uh, closer of the Rays, and he joins us now. Pete, thanks for taking the time to be with us today. First, before we get into some of the stuff that I want to talk to you about personally, let's talk about the effort that Zach Eflin gave this club last night. He basically reset the rotation. How key was that for you? Yeah. Um, anytime, one, you got your ace on the bump, and two, he can give you, you know, six and, what, a third, I think it ended up being. But anytime you can uh, – you know, kind of take the pressure off the pin for a little bit and, and go out there and, and put up a lot of zeros while doing it, I think is, you know, it's a pretty big positive for all. And you're right, it was six in the third, it was efficient, and that's exactly what your manager, Kevin Cash, wanted. Also your pitching coach, Schneider, he said, you know what, they, we just have to throw strikes and we need to remember the cost of a ball, especially uh, ball one. Tell us more about that, how you guys, of course, you always hear people yelling from the stands, just throw strikes. It's not always that easy though, is it, Pete? Uh, no, um, you know, I think that there's, there's the, the layers to it, right? You, you know, you sometimes remember the times you've been victimized, you know, relentless, you know, relentless, uh, relentlessly attacking the zone. <laughs> um, you know, it's, and it's our kind of human nature to think about the bad stuff that happens from attacking the zone instead of, you know, being up a one and, and the difference that it goes, you know, in, in your, um, OBP from going one Oh, versus going Oh one going two one versus one two you know and to just you know really lock that in and know that the the strike throwing is, is the most important you know aspect of pitching obviously and then you need to execute when you get to two strikes which i did not do um but yeah you know f did a great job of, of sprinting ahead and then executing with two and it was a lot of fun to watch last night yeah, keep the count in your favor. That is the key. Eric Neander was so complimentary, Pete, of the Rays bullpen this spring. He said it over and over and over again, how he thought that this Rays pen was one of the best that he's ever seen. What makes you guys that good? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, when we're our best, it's what we talked about, right? We're, we're attacking the zone, and, and that kind of sets the tone for – all of us, uh, I need people to stop saying that though, because then everybody's like, "Oh, these guys are really good." Come on, give us a little bit of, give us a little bit of runway here, all right? Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, you know, I think it's a very talented group. You got a lot of guys that can do a lot of different things, and a lot of guys that, you know, approach the zone and what they do in a variety of ways. And I think that we kind of all complement each other in that regard. Yeah, that's fair. We don't want a bullet, uh, a bullseye on your back, of course, as far as the pen is concerned. I want to ask you about things personally with you in Tampa Bay. It's the only organization that you've ever known. They extended you last January, coming off a of Tommy John surgery. And this is an organization, Pete, that oftentimes lets relievers walk, gives them opportunities to go other places, but they didn't want you to leave. What does that confidence in you say? Uh, yeah, I mean, they went out of their way to acquire me after my, my very brief stint with Texas, so it's always... Uh, it's always fun to play against those guys, even though I didn't spend a lot of time there. Um, but yeah, Eric and the guys and, and Snides and Cash and from top to bottom, um, you know, have done none, done nothing but right by me so far. Um, and it's a place that I love. I, I would love to be able to spend, you know, every day that I get to play this game here. But, you know, it, it's uh, it's a great group and, and to have that, you know, those those guys that believe in you and, and have really been instrumental in, in furthering my career I can't be you know thankful enough for uh you know the situation that I'm in here and each team has a culture and I think Kevin Cash has done a good job of building a culture maintaining a culture that is successful there and he's the longest tenured manager with his current team in Major League Baseball what have you noticed about the way he goes about the business and that culture that he's creating yeah um you know, I think Kevin does a great job of letting us, you know, kind of be the drivers of everything. And obviously he's, uh, you know, like a like a rudder on a ship. You know, if things need to be righted, he's there and is, is a good presence for that. But, you know, he's uh, he's been very successful. And, and I think a lot of that is his ability to get us to, you know, be ourselves and then reap the benefits from being, you know, comfortable enough to, to be yourself and, you know, to let the different personalities play. And he does a great job of being able to, you know, take that, but st then still, you know, synergize it into a unit that, that's all pushing towards a common goal. 
Yeah, and you guys are perennial contenders as far as the postseason is concerned. Always seem to be right in the thick of things. Started off the season so far 3-3, three and three, certainly a long way to go. Last year, though, 13-0 and 0 to start the season. It was a historic run, and your teams started calling you rare banks because you never had to get into the game because of all the blowout wins. But also, Snyder, your pitching coach, said it, fit it, it fits you because – He's, you have one of the most rare arsenals that he's seen. How do you think your pitch mix has served you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the driving force, uh, you know, the kind of the cut right heater and everything that that, you know, then drives into is, is kind of a supinator and, and being able to be on the side of the baseball. Um, but, yeah, it allows me to, you know, stay kind of more on the outside of things, kind of towards the, the neutral line via – you know, the, the lateral spine tilt and, you know, just natural tendency towards, you know, supination over pronation. And, you know, I think Snides has been very much a boon in helping me, uh, you know, refine that and turn it into what it is today. Supination, pronation, those are a lot of big words for a day game before a day game. I'm tired. I don't even understand what that means right now. But I want to go back to your signature slider. It's a it's a pitch that you learned when you were 14, 15 years old. I mean, that's a young, young age to learn that. How has it changed over the course of your career? Yeah, it was, uh, it's been a lot of tinkering. Um, it took me, uh, post-second post TJ, it took me a little bit to figure it out. I was kind of relearning it on the fly. Um, but yeah, just it's kind of a constant thing to, you know, feeling out where the hand is, how the wrist is set, you know, and then making sure we're really feeling like we can pull down through the side of the ball and uh, really, you know, create the, the depth that I'm able to get on it. All right, 162 games is a lot. I know that you're not pitching in every single one, but it's a long season. You need stuff off the field to keep you going, keep you motivated. Legos, comic books, collectibles. I understand that over the course of the uh, last couple months, you finished Hogwarts as far as Legos is concerned. Now, my stepdaughter Ashlyn did that one two years ago, and she's only 13. How hard was it? Uh, this one, not too bad. It was a, it's the mini scale one, so it's not the, it's not the big collector's one. Um, mainly because I don't have room in my house for any of my big uh, UCS Lego <laughs> sets. Um, and if I started building them, I think my wife would just either get rid of them without me knowing or force me to leave them in the garage. And I don't want to do that to my pre very precious Star Destroyers. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's I try and keep it, try and keep it uh, as fun off the field as I can. And if that, you know, is leads me towards a lot of uh, nerdy pastimes, you know, so be it. <laughs> No, that's fine. Lydia might actually DFA you. She might not get rid of the Lego. She <laughs> might just get rid of you. Uh, all right, if you had one collectible <laughs> as far as a comic book is concerned, if there's one out there that you'd really love to have, what is it? Oh, wow, that's going to put me on the spot because there's a lot that, uh, you know, that I, that I would think I would be uh, very appreciative of. But I think... Um, just on a, just for a nostalgia and a, and a personal bias, um, I'd say probably the iconic, uh, Nightfall one where, where Batman gets his, his back snapped over Bane's knee. I think that would be a pretty good, uh, a pretty good collectible one to, uh, put into the, uh, what word am I looking for here? I can't think of it. The collection, but that's kind of, the that's arsenal, kind of lame. your collection, your arsenal. Yeah, sure. Of we'll comic put it in books. an arsenal. That would be fair. Okay, yeah, we'll I would love to archives. have seen you on Big Bang Theory with uh, with Sheldon and Howard Wolowitz and you know Rajesh and Leonard. I'm just talking about Stan Lee and all of the different comic books and Marvel and, and Nightfall and all of these things. Pete Fairbanks, good thing that you guys are uh, doing well because it's been fun to be able to talk to you. I appreciate the time. Best of luck against Texas today and, and uh, the rest of this season. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.